Okay, to go over yesterday's Instagram story questions, three questions. First one was, why did I want the patient to go back to riding the mountain bike versus a stationary bike after suffering a low back injury on the mountain bike? Number two was, why did I have a patient that came in with um, low back and hip problems stop doing the active dynamic resisted exercises that she, she was given by her previous physical therapist and regressed to isometrics. And the third question is why single leg squat is such an uh, important functional test for all of your patients. So number one, mountain bike. So patient uh, had low back pain, had a hyperextension injury, actually went over the handlebars on his bike, landed on his shoulder, hyperextension lumbar spine. Um, why do I want him to go back to mountain bike? So the funny thing is I said, you know, you need to get back on your bike and start riding. Um, and his first response was, well, you know, the chiropractor that I was seeing before you said, don't go back and ride a mountain bike. You need to go ride a stationary bike first. And I said, okay, well, what happened when you went back and rode the stationary bike? He said, my back pain got worse. Exactly. Why? because a stationary bike is going to keep you predominantly in one plane of motion, just like a road bike, just like running long distance runners. So what do we see with long distance runners and road bike uh, riders? We see lack of range of motion, tight hamstrings, tight back, all of those things because they're predominantly in one position doing single plane range of motion. If I put him on his mountain bike, now he's moving the bike back and forth, he's getting lumbo pelvic range of motion. He's up out of the seat, he's down in the seat. He's up out of the seat, he's down in the seat. He's responding to um, vibration, shock, hitting rocks, bumps, going up and down hills. Whereas stationary bike, he's sitting in one position, just riding. Even if he stands up, that bike is staying still and he's just single plane motion. Stupid fly. Um, so, that's why I want him to be on the mountain bike. So he's getting more a planar motion, moving, uh, using more of his joints, recruiting more muscle. So he's not just sitting with his lumbar spine in one motion while his hips and knees are going through this motion. All that's going to do is make his lumbar spine start compensating again because he's in the same um, uh, amount of flexion extension in the lumbar spine, which makes it more tight, okay? So whenever possible, make patients move throughout a dynamic range of motion and try to mimic what they're going to back, go back to be doing. So question number two was um, regressing to isometrics. So if we've got patients that are doing exercise and they come in and say their exercise is making them worse or they're getting tight or they're getting muscle spasms, that is telling you that they are failing because they have muscles that are not doing what they should be doing. So they're compensating. And the more they do whatever exercise it is, the more they compensate. Those compensation muscles then fatigue. They go on to the next group of muscles to compensate. Those fatigue. And now they're getting worse and getting worse and breaking down. Um, so... We need them to stop doing those things. So this patient came in and she's been doing this and having these problems for like two or three years. And she's, she keeps doing the same exercises. And she says, well, you know, I feel a little bit better when I do them, but all of a sudden everything gets worse. And then when I sit down, it gets really bad. What's happening? Those muscles that she's fatiguing with the active dynamic resisted exercises are fatiguing she sits down or gets in one position, they get shortened, they have a neuromuscular inhibition, that's what happens when you fatigue, and now there's no regulation from the nervous system to tell those actinomyosin cross bridges to get longer, get shorter, they get short, there's no uh, central nervous system input, and they get stuck in that position. So now when she tries to get up, ugh, I can't move. What does she do? I have to stretch to get them to move. What does that do? Causes more neuromuscular inhibition. So when she sits down again, she gets tight. So she's in this back and forth yo-yo thing and everything is just snowballing and making her worse. So what we need to do is stop doing all that stuff, regress back to isometrics, which are muscle specific. Remember, you cannot do a muscle specific 
corrective exercise that is either eccentric or concentric. There's a, it doesn't happen. You can't just use one muscle when you're doing a concentric or eccentric exercise. We can get in specific positions and do isometrics. Now, are you going to get only that muscle to contract? No, but you're going to get those other um, muscles that are synergists to at least be quiet. So dim them down a little bit. Focus on the one muscle that's inhibited with an isometric, five second contraction, repeat five times. Why do we do that? Because when I went through and looked at the research, the way you increase neuromuscular physician with, with isometrics is a five second contraction, repeat five times. It's not a 10 second contraction, 10, 10 times. That doesn't make it better. That makes it fatigue again. So we get in certain positions, those isometric positions mimic the positions that we test them in with neuromuscular facilitation tests, and that's how you get those muscles to kick back on, and now you get normal cross bridge lengthening and shortening. The only way you're gonna learn how to do that and do those isometrics correctly is to learn the 180 system. All right, last question was single leg squat. Why is a single leg so squat so important to assess when you're doing a functional screen? Because it's going to show you how they respond to single leg stance functional um, ability. Your gait cycle is mostly single leg stance. Your sports are mostly single leg stance. So if you're not assessing single leg stance, you're missing most of what they do. Now, what are we looking for in the single leg squat? We wanna see if they pronate correctly and then supinate. How do we do this? We have to take their shoes off. So if you're not taking your patient's shoes off when you're doing an assessment, you're blowing it. If you're not looking at single leg stance function, you're blowing it. It doesn't matter what they're coming in with. If you have a shoulder patient come in and you're not taking off their shoes and watch them do a functional screen and single leg stance, you're blowing it. You're missing a ton of information and that's why it's taking them two times a week for eight weeks to get moderately better instead of twice to get all the way better. So single leg squat, we're watching their ability to load into pronation, which is collapsing energy storage, and then unload into supination energy release. So when you are going through pronation, you are adducting, you are internally rotating, and you are flexing at the hip, the knee, the ankle, the foot. So we're assessing all of those things. So we can see, oh, they're pronating too far too fast and they're falling over. Well, that tells us there's specific muscles that are eccentrically loading in order to control pronation. So if they can't do that, they're failing that. We already know. We're going to look at gluteus medius, tensor fascia lata, gluteus minimus, vastus lateralis, uh, soleus, abductor hallucis, transverse abdominis, and see which one of those muscles or maybe all of those muscles are inhibited, which is why they're failing a single leg squat. So right there, that gives you a huge starting point when you go to your treatment. So I say it over and over again. If you're not assessing everything with a functional screen, you are completely guessing when you get to the treatment. If you do a single leg squat and you understand the biomechanics, the muscles involved, the joints involved, and physics, then you understand exactly where to go to in your treatment. So that's why it's imperative to do a single leg squat without shoes on with every single patient that walks in your clinic. If you don't understand that, if you don't get the A-planar um, functional motion transverse plane components of what I talked about with the bicycle, and you don't understand how to do isometrics that are muscle specific and how to assess muscle specific neuromuscular facilitation, you need to get into one of the 180 system products. That's the only way you're gonna figure that out. All right, thanks for watching. Post comments and questions below.